people or family or friends looking after it. I, maybe it's a transfer. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I was always an advocate for education. During my own experience in the past, on my path to become an agent, I realized there was really nothing outside in the world to see how really you can become an agent. Is there any guide outside? There were really nothing. And during the last few years, it developed more and more. And then I came together with my partners, Jack and Charlie, while I was also teaching now at universities as a guest lecturer at UCFB, at the FBA. And I thought it might be a good idea to start something in this business to bring something out which could help other upcoming young aspiring agents to have a guide in their hand to see how really can we get into that business. That's actually how it developed. While I was studying, I had to get scholarships from, uni uh, from the government because I couldn't uh, afford studying. The money of my parents weren't enough to have all the kids for studying, so I had to work. I worked for H&M. I was uh, giving out flyers like here in Oxford Street, imagine in Germany, at the weekends. I was cleaning factories on Saturdays with friends. I was, uh, I was working as a waiter four years every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I did a lot of jobs to really... I work hard, I, but the main thing was always I believed in myself. I never listened to someone else's opinion saying about oh, it's too difficult, oh, you can't make it, oh. That was like negative influence, negative people, I never surrounded around me. Always people with positive influence, they have dreams, they have visions, so surround yourself around them. And that was always my goal and always the way I was. I mean, my father was someone who could just go to primary school and uh, my grandfather couldn't afford him to send to the next city in Turkey to go uh, for high school and college, so the money wasn't enough, so he had to work as a farmer. And he had it always inside himself, so I couldn't go because of money, but my kids, I would support as much as I can. So he's a very hard-working guy, he was always, and my mother too. My father was working in a factory in Germany, my mother was going cleaning. So they were really loyal, honest people, like, and they always wanted to give the best for their kids. My father always said, I don't want to leave anything back in this life, just educated kids. And that's what he always gave to me, my sister, my brother, he always wanted us to become something in life. And I think they are now, they are very proud right now. I think uh, they have two kids, they're lawyers. Personally, I think uh, I want more educated people in the business. I want more transparency in the business. I want more that clubs are working with the right agents. I would say, yeah, education for agents, again, an exam for agents. I mean, it changed in the last couple of years. There is no exam actually to become a football agent. I mean, tomorrow anyone can start and work as an agent, but there is no background, there is no education, there is no knowledge, and that's the danger for that business as well. That was a very interesting uh, uh, experience for me and for my client. So we were leaving home, going to a restaurant, I think, and uh, the paparazzi were following us. So. We know that, that 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 happens everywhere in the world, but this was very strange. So we actually realized uh, we should maybe go back home and it was a bad game. I think it was after a bad game. Uh, and then while we were driving, he get out of his car and stand in front of the car. So we, so we couldn't literally drive. And then I just said to my client, just drive very slowly, like so that, you know, like that we can go around or something. So he put his arm towards the wing mirror and pushed it like this. And he acted like as we were driving into him. And then he was screaming, oh, you injured me. And then he called the ambulance and everything. It was like a, it was like a disaster. He just wanted to make news. Like, I mean, you have that all over the world. But I think England is a little bit different than anywhere else with paparazzi. I have the feeling. I mean, it's very important. That's why I think there are, some agents differ from each other. There are, there are agents... They just do deals and go. And there are agents who really look after their clients with everything. So then that's why I do always these two categories of agents. Either you're just a deal broker maybe. You just broke a deal and then you leave the player aside. You don't care. And then every when there's a renewal, you come back. And when there's an opportunity to transfer, you come back. Or you really do what we do, 
That's why we don't have a lot of clients. We have less clients and we work directly with the families together. That's why we call ourselves family and football. So every family member is involved. Like if it's uh, in one is the brother, in one is the father, in one is the uncle. But we work directly with the family members and we have very few players and they're all quality players. So that's why we can give them a really good service with everything. I don't believe in an agency with 100 players. That's you. How can you give them like the services? It's, it's impossible. It's just a factory. You have to imagine, the family is looking after the boy the whole life. From the birth, he's six, seven years old, bringing him to the training ground every day, playing football every day, and then till he's becoming 17, 18, and suddenly from the left hand side, an agent is coming saying, I do the deal takes 100% of the commission and the family is still stuck on the player on the, and have to ask the son, oh, we need some money. I think that's, I mean, I don't think that's really fair in my opinion. And I think some family members realize that. That's why we have a lot of family members today acting as agents. I think for the young player, I say play football. Yeah, don't look for an agent, just play football enjoy playing football and stick on education. You never know what will happen tomorrow. If you have a bad injury, it's gone. Football is not everything in life, but he should stick on playing great football every weekend and shouldn't be when he's 16, 15, thinking about oh, who should be my agent or the other agent, that one. I mean, uh, the time for an agent will come or a lawyer when the time is right, but that's not with 14, 15, that's just, you know, slavery. Social media is going to be more important every day. It's growing and it's becoming a business for the player. If you have a good, good controlled or good managed social media, it's another income stream for the player and in future it will be even bigger. Because on the one side the player can connect himself with the players worldwide. It's a great opportunity. And on the other side, he can give something about not just his sportive life, also about his personal life. And for sponsorships, it's a great opportunity uh, to approach players because they know exactly what kind of fans they have, where the fans, fans coming from. You can now see everything like are the fans in which country, which language are they speaking. So for sponsors, it's very interesting and partners to work with players which have a uh, good social media reach, but also good interactive, like the, it's not to having a reach, but also if the, sire, if the page is also active, uh, where really fans are discussing and talking a lot. And we, we started quite early with social media. That's why Mesut Social Media is, I think it's number one in England right now, isn't it? From the followers. And uh, we started really early when other people were saying, why do you uh, pay uh, an agency for looking after the social media. And I said, look, that's the future because we believe in a certain time we will get a lot of money back. I mean, networking is probably the most important thing in our business. Uh, to create a network, uh, literally to build up that network, to remain it, and in the right time to really use this network. And uh, it's a process which you have to go from step one to step five. It's really, I tell a lot of the younger uh, students who comes here for an intern, I tell them really start create your network, really meet people for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and really find the right ones. They're, they're good agents outside. They're good people working for clubs a lot. You have to find the right ones. If you're on your way to become an agent, let's say you finish university and then you're getting into the business, but still do a master besides in sports management or in sports law, or, or an MBA or do something or learn a language which is a key as well in our business if you just know English it's good but if you know Spanish on top it's better and if you know German and another language on top it's much better so it opens you more doors so that's why education is so important I say if you know more languages if you have more abilities if you are at the same time a lawyer so you have a background for contracts it gives you much more bigger opportunity into the business never think about doing something dodgy once you're in once you never can get out of that that's the most important thing if you're thinking about giving kickbacks to coaches to people who are working in a club then you're done 
then it's a short-term investment. You do a couple and they will use it against you. We saw it in England, didn't we? It came out. So many people are involved in these things. They're showing always the bad agents. They're saying, oh, agents are bad. Like the reputation of agents are so bad. They're not the agents are the bad ones. There are bad agents, yeah, and they're good agents. Like in any other profession, good lawyers and bad. But the bad agents remains because of the bad people in the clubs. If the people working in the club, the sporting directors, the board members, the decision taker, the managers, if they wouldn't work with these people, then they wouldn't be in this business. But they like these people, so they can do their dodgy things. That's why we will have always these bad agents running around, because they are the good ones for the bad guys inside the clubs. They can do their dodgy deals. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them. Definitely. Uh, I think that's, that's what I realized in the last 10 years since I'm in the business. I realized sometimes how difficult it is to go into, into a certain football club because someone is standing in front of the door and that's a guy who works for the someone inside the club. And uh, I, I realized more and more it's not about the agents. It's about the guys inside the club who allows these agents to get in and out as they're kind of running a club. I mean, the problem are not the agents itself. You can regulate, you can do anything. There will be bad agents, I mean, generally, who work not good for their clients, for the players. They do bad contracts, they don't do good negotiations, whatever. But I mean, like, really dodgy stuff. I mean, or really these bad stuff. They're coming from the clubs, they're not coming from the agents. Because the clubs shouldn't just allow, shouldn't just put these things in. That's why I want educated people more and more thinking long term. Don't do it. Wait long term and then the others will get out. Even the people inside the clubs will change. The guys will change in the next five years, ten years. So more people like educated people who really want to do a good job, want to do with good people. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm living once in my life and I want to work with good people and I want to be surrounded by good people. I don't want to share my time with people sitting on a table and telling how much can I give them under the table. You know, because if it's about that, then, then it's not a business anymore for me. Then it's just doing a bad thing. And this is not how I got it from my family. This is not what I want to give to the students. Because this is short-term thinking and this is not a good thinking. And this doesn't help the business. So that's why I think the most important thing is that the mindset of the upcoming agent is really don't let allow that. That someone within the clubs uses you for their dodgy things. Say no. Wait. Just say no and wait. The right opportunity the right business will come on time.